Hello world. Uh, my name is Timothy Trespass and I am a targeted individual. Uh, what that means for those of you who do not yet know, uh, I have been chosen by whatever secret means to be used as a victim in human experimentation. In my case the experimentation has been uh, along the lines of MK Ultra style mind control programming. Uh, including gang stalking, street theater, traumatic events, electrocution, poisoning, um, you know, complete total surveillance, uh, constant drugging every day with LSD, covert drugging, and other other drugs. Um, Morgellons disease. We were given Morgellons disease. We had uh, sores all over us and bugs climbing in and out of us everywhere. Um, electromagnetic uh, remote neural monitoring and mind control and the voices in the head and the, the pain and the torture of being cooked alive and manipulated electromagnetically um, coercive technology um, you know I, I I told myself that I should make these videos um, for a few reasons. One, because they're murdering me and I find that appalling and uh, no one else will listen. No authorities seem to care. So, you know, this is like the last place where I have any ability to talk about myself and my life and explain share with others and uh, I hope that by my my by my willingness to a uh, be murdered by these people for speaking the truth which I think they're gonna murder me anyway but B to expose my life in the starkest terms possible uh, for the world to know if they're interested, um, you know, for me to exist in some way that 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 um, allowed me to feel like I was fulfilling some useful purpose on the planet, um, and to show the deterioration of my physical and mental status. by this disease, this treatment, this torture, electromagnetic remote neural connectivity, more gallons, etc. Um, and that, you know, I want to just put it all out there. Basically, um, I do attempt to make content that is at least somewhat watchable. Um, but you know this is the the truth this is the reality this is my life this is who i am and um you know so you'll have to forgive me if i forget what i'm saying or if i ramble on about you know whatever just repeat the th same things over and over or just stare blankly at the screen um You know, I, I think that it's just the experience of seeing another human being honestly express not simply their their pain, their, their suffering, their torment, their experience, their you know what have you, but you know these are extraordinary circumstances, extraordinary times. Um, from my understanding and my research and my contact with others, there is there are clearly many many other people who are targeted, not only in this country but around the world. There's no way to really estimate how many, except 
to say that it must be in the tens of thousands, possibly in the hundreds of thousands. Um, if we go with the uh, weather modification, chemtrails contain seeded Morgellons organism uh, to slowly infect all life, all human life, and all life with this organism. And if it, in fact, does have any relationship to the remote neural interconnectivity, the electromagnetic vibrational connection uh, by building semiconductor parts, crystal piezoelectric parts, um, quorum sensing, nanobiological sensors in our bodies that allow this system to pull the data stream to f focus in on us based on our DNA or whatever other you know sequence that's been put in there and and uh, electromagnetically focused in on using an extremely high frequency signal one that's probably higher than you know in the gamma rays range uh, something that goes through metal and concrete and buildings and subways and <coughs> allows them to connect basically right to my brain and if if my belief about Morgellons is true that it that it basically steals iron from your hemoglobin in order to among other things build electromagnetic conduits throughout your body probably interfacing with your nerves and your neurons and any other electromagnetic function of the body um, that this thing if it's building these fibrous strands that are electroconductive throughout us you know would account for some of the seizure activity that I, I detect or the the uh, brain fog, as we like to call it, the, the loss of memory, the anxiety, the fear. The anyway, um, you know, I, I I don't really have a point for this one. You know, I just figured this is my life. You know, I I, I spend my time. When I'm on camera, when I'm off camera, basically 24-7 getting zapped with this high frequency, really loud, you know, in my head, inside my head that can't be blocked by putting your fingers in your ears. On that same signal becomes people's voices, people saying mean and nasty things to me or or telling me to do stuff or uh, sometimes it's a computer voice I believe and it's trying to ascertain what I'm seeing what I'm saying what I'm thinking and merge those data streams the emotional and all that other stuff together biometric data with in the artificial intelligence to try to figure out if it doesn't know what it's seeing and what I'm thinking then it would query by giving me the next best guess you know so if I'm looking at my face it might say face Timothy computer you know and and I would my brain would say yeah that's my face on the screen there and and these words they come into your brain almost as though they're yours <laughs> but <sighs> clearly they're not and there are times when it's when it's obvious uh, that this is not you and then there's other times where it's very subtle and and if you're not paying attention it may just slip right by you and you might think it's you which I believe is one of the points of this technology is to try to fool the target into believing that this thought stream is only contains one's own thoughts Excuse me. And through use of drugs and you know traumatic uh, experience, <coughs> get the target to believe 
uh, whatever the controller wants them to believe, basically, but it's based more on what the target interprets, you know, what the target's previous belief structures and programming, what the target's uh, ideology, ethnic background, sexual preference, religious orientation, um, you know, training, education, uh, how do they see the world? How many languages do they speak? You know, how do they see the world? What do they believe is real? Um, are they superstitious? Do they believe in ghosts or monsters or UFOs or 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 whatever? Anything? Magical thinking, you know. Um, and these these things that are are come back from. Uh, a, the long-term observation of the target, and B, the direct neural query of the target's uh, thought stream, the sub-vocalized speech, allow the system to uh, slowly, over time, using, say, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of targets, to very rapidly um, consume, log, and interpret, and then write algorithms to uh, understand and work with this huge volume of data, uh, visual data, what I see through my eyes, uh, the thought stream data, which I believe may be only the sub-vocalized thought, um, but I have no way of knowing. It may be deeper than that. There may be direct neuronal connection through Morgellon sensing to different areas of the brain, speech center, hearing center, sight, vision, coordination, uh, you know, all the regulatory places in the brain, any place where we can get biometric data. It's basically like tapping your phone line, except we're doing it to your brain with bio nanotechnology and remote um remote uh, neural um, telemetry basically um, and my belief as I've said before is that the, this is a radio frequency satellite based system it may well operate uh, you know there's so many ways it could operate it could operate using the cell phone system to to give it background radiation to bounce off of each target that has semiconductor and crystalline parts in them to uh, tune or detune basically a, a, a filter circuit, you know, to uh, absorb or reflect this radiation and the interference pattern of, of the neural neural information and this background radiation of the cell phone system. Um, you know, sending its data in certain pattern fluctuations, um, you know, frequency modulated, code division, multiple access, time division, multiple access, all that stuff. Um, this interference pattern would be used then to decipher the the ongoing connection to the neural system. Uh, if you think of it in terms of of holography. This is an interesting idea. I just came up with it. If you think of it in terms of holography, holography works, as far as I know, by taking a laser beam, splitting that beam, shining the beam onto the object and onto the, the plate that's recording, the medium that's recording the holographic image. I, I, I might get this wrong, but uh, what's created on the plate is through the interaction of the reflected laser beam from the object and the other beam, wherever it's placed, I'm not sure, but you can look it up. But what's, what's created is an interference pattern. So it's not like a photograph of the object, it's a photograph of how the light scatters and reflects off of the object. And by taking that pattern and passing the laser light back through that pattern, you can recreate the image of the object by 
showing the interference pattern and illuminating it, right? So there was an object there, and it interfered with the light. And by recording that interference, we were then able to reproduce the object. So I think of it in terms of, of brain waves now. We have a system, uh, a neurological, bio-neurological, energetic system that works on electromagnetic, biologically produced electromagnetic pulses. Uh, it is a, I don't know what kind of system it is. It's not really... Well, it's sort of a binary system, except there, it's a quantum binary system, actually. There's so many neurons, and there's so many multiple connections, and they can either be on or off. Um, it becomes a quantum biological system, I believe. I'm just making this up off the top of my head, so <laughs> ride with me here. Um, so then you have the brain waves and the electromagnetic energies emanating from them. We have an external source of microwave radiation, certain frequencies that is radiating, and that would interfere with those two. And by placing parts and sensors inside of the body to direct certain data streams, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm just making this up. I mean, it could work somehow, sort of like over-the-horizon radar. Or, I don't know. I don't know. And and I wonder frequently, like, when I have these ideas and I get this fog, and I'm like, uh, what was I just saying? And I try desperately to catch up. <laughs> Whether that's something that someone in the control room, because I know, I, I know you're there. I know you're there in the control room watching what I see through my eyes. And I know that you can hear what I say and what I think. So I'm wondering, is the person in the control room like pushing the button, brain fog, brain fog? Because they do that. They, they talk. You know, this is a, a live 24-7 interactive broadcast between my brain, my experience, my subjective and objective experience, and some lunatics in a government-sponsored lunatic asylum uh, with technology that would make Tesla, you know, cream his genes, and, and, and they're twiddling the knobs. Unfortunately, there's real human beings on the other end of that. And I'm one of them. <sighs> yeah. Now, you know, I, we can get all into the crazy end times and biblical prophecy and, and, and antichrist and all the stuff that's supposed to happen and the fallen angels and the... What are the UFOs and the aliens and the crazy hybridization and the reptilians and the moon is a planet with a system inside to keep us all down and who took over the earth and all that crazy ancient history stories. And yeah, that's all important and all. However, <sighs> the fact remains that there are bad people in charge of things they shouldn't be in charge of, like us, like the government, like the economy, like the military, like health care, public safety, social security, banking, you know, you name it. Um, these people have grabbed it by the balls and, and claimed it for their own. And, um, we, the good people, the ones who just want a life, who don't mind working hard to make a life for ourselves, and, you know, who have ideals and who believe in God or not, you know, have moral standards and who care about our fellow human beings, who care about other life on the planet, who realize that. This isn't a race to stuff as much stuff in your pocket as you can before you drop dead so you can be the winner. That it's uh, something else. You know, that there must be a purpose, a reason to this existence. And some of us want to find out what that is and make sure we be about that 
that purpose. Um, so, you know, the fact that we are in a time where these people have gotten charge of stuff and they have managed to fool almost everybody. You know, I have to think, and I go back and forth on this, but I have to think that the people sitting in the control room, the ones monitoring what I see and think and hear and say, the ones turning the knobs and pushing the buttons that make me look like a, a half-dead crazy guy rather than ten years younger than I was and, you know, attractive, healthy, happy person. Um, that those people, they how can they not know they're doing wrong? by doing this job. So they must either be A, completely evil, or B, <sighs> believe something that allows them to do this thing to so many people, to hurt and kill so many people, to repeatedly traumatize and torture fellow human beings, there must be something that allows them to do this and still go home at night and kiss their children and their wives and husbands. Um, why they don't all quit their jobs. And, you know, uh, <laughs> because there's something there. There's top secret clearance. There's ideology. There's patriotism. There's secret societies. There's cult programming. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what to think anymore because I've been put through this, this Alice in Wonderland thing, you know. I... I Yeah, I, I guess I do know what to think. That it's just like I always thought. It's need-to-know basis. It's compartmentalization. It's, uh, you know, high-level security clearance. It's sworn oaths of allegiance to death. And uh, perhaps they don't believe that they have an eternal soul. Perhaps they don't believe that there's a God or a creator or a being, a force that animates all life in this universe that that is going to that is watching us and and helping us and driving this thing forward or perhaps they'd have no longer a dualistic worldview where good and evil are no longer the contenders for, you know, for the <laughs> for the heavyweight championship of the universe, but are merely uh, two ends of a spectrum that contains an infinite variation of of grays and whites and blacks. And, uh, still, I, I find it hard to to look in the mirror and watch myself dying, you know, to look in the mirror when I'm suffering horrendous emotional distress and the first things that happen is my MK Ultra programming kicks in and says, you should kill yourself, Timothy. Yes, maybe if I kill myself, none of this would happen and I'd feel so much better. I mean, you know, post-hypnotic suggestion, <laughs> you know, what, what are we making? here is like the remote control Manchurian candidate you know like if we can make a video game that the kids take home and they plug it in and they play it and by the time they 
done. They, they're compartmentalized Manchurian assassins for the government who have no realization that they have an alter ego with another personality. I mean, this is the, like the wet dream of these people, man. And I think there are those of us in the world who really feel that this kind of stuff should be made unnecessary. That that we have realized that things like war, hot war, cold war, any kind of freaking war, is pretty much uh, the result of a bunch of rich bankers getting together in the back room possibly worshipping Satan and doing ungodly acts while sacrificing virgins uh, and talking about how can we make a lot of money by getting these people over here to kill these people over here and these people over here will help kill them back and we'll sell them a lot of stuff to help kill each other with and then we'll move in we'll take all their stuff while they're busy healing from their wounds <laughs> Uh, and burying their dead and lamenting, uh, you know, and uh, you know, I think that 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 some of us have realized that that you know we can vote, but our vote doesn't mean a freaking thing. You know, it's either like you get this evil reptile guy or you get the antichrist. You know, it's like it's like baseball with one team. You know, nobody wants to go see that because it's not much fun. You already know who's going to win, and you already know who's going to lose. The spectators. It's all we are now. Chattel. Spectators. You know, I, I feel... Uh, I feel a lot of things. My feelings are extremely complex. But, um... I've realized that that as insane as it sounds and it took me a long time to come to this understanding that that the truth may be that that I Timothy trespass was <coughs> uh chosen for this treatment a long time ago, perhaps before I was even born, and uh, that in one form or another, my life has been manipulated to make sure that, for whatever reason, I didn't amount to much of anything. Um, you know, and I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, that's bullshit, that's an excuse, you're just a lazy, stupid fuck, and if you had done blah, 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 none of this would have happened, you know, but I, I used to believe that, believe it or not, I used to believe that. I used to beat myself up, saying, oh, it's all your fault, and if only you had blah, 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 none of this would have happened, but, you know, when I realized <laughs> what was being done to me, and when I looked back over my life with the with the viewfinder, you know, with the viewfinder with all the, the the now understanding of what it is that happens and how they do it and why it is that you say, gee, that that couldn't have been somebody screwing with me. It must have been my fault, kind of thing. And I realized that, wow. You know, this has been going on for a long time. And when you find out that, like, you've been drugged for years, you know, slowly, and you've been given diseases, and, and people have been not only watching you, listening to your thoughts, but, like, programming you and and making sure that you never amounted to much at all, you know, trying to screw up your life and make sure you're, you you got nothing, no business, no home, no money, no family, no friends, no no safety, no health, and then you go crazy and die, you know? And I start to wonder if, like, all those homeless people 
running around in the streets, like talking to themselves, if they weren't pushed into this by some, by this program, by these people, by this treatment. And what in the world is going on? You know, like I never thought that America was based entirely on on secret societies, and that that if you wanted to be anything more than a hamburger flipper, that you have to like sign your soul away or something. Nobody ever told me that. Nobody ever even intimated or hinted at it or anything. I guess it was just decided from birth that this dude wasn't going to be allowed into the club no matter how bright he was, no matter how talented he was, no matter what ideas he had, no matter what he tried to do or wanted to do or thought about or cared about or, you know? And then you start looking back into the things you did out of desperation because you were driven to it. And you know, the thing that, that really, I, I still am not fully understanding is that, and a lot of people ask this, why you? You know, you're nobody. You're not so important that people would spend 12 million dollars on you to, you know, and that's what I said. I said, I'm not, you know, 12 million dollar experiment. Come on. You know, I'm nobody. But somebody clearly thought that uh, that something, you know, that either I was a threat to something or someone, or that, you know, science was better served Science was better served I'm trying to find the, the angle yeah, science was better served by sucking the life out of this young gentleman and making sure that his dreams were never realized. Putting him through a, a basic traumatic, uh, traumatic programming. You know, there's many levels of this trauma-based stuff, and they're trying to figure out how can we do it so that nobody even knows they're being traumatized. How can we program people so that they don't even know they're being programmed, and better yet, they think it's their own idea. And I'm here to tell you, they've gotten pretty far. That's why most people, unless they're... Uh, I don't know, unless they're intelligent and they're paying attention. And most people, A, don't believe that many of the things that targets say are true or could be true. And B, can't understand how or why the system that they think they live in, you know, how it could possibly allow for such devious behavior and... Um, things to go unchecked by the law and such and you know I was the same way I, I you know I mean really even having this very esoteric mindset and skill sets and experiences you know I, I kind of thought that the world was the way they told me it was even though I knew that a lot of shit happened differently and whatever I didn't realize that almost everything they ever taught me was lies. That I was uh, being programmed to build a prison around my mind, uh, around myself, that I wouldn't know existed, and that I would never go outside of, because it was in my mind. and. <clears throat> Uh, also, that all of my role models came from television, um, and uh, were merely caricatures, pre-programmed caricatures with specific functions, and that one day, after deep self-examination, I realized that, wow. I had been living in this prison for years. 
I had been afraid to even see that there were walls there that there was a mechanism that protected this illusion well it wasn't an illusion to me but it's an illusory prison it's very real in that you won't ever go outside of it if you don't know it's there but it's an illusion because once you realize it exists and you understand the mechanisms that hold it in place it can crumble to the ground as though it were nothing more than a shadow and um, this is something they don't want people to know uh, that education is being reduced so that people don't have the ability to think critically anymore uh, you know simply by reducing one's vocabulary one has less words by which to describe the world, describe one's place in the world, describes one's experience of the world and of self and others. Um, I don't know. I, I, I see the many, the many threads of the web that the spider weaves in order to catch the, the flies and insects that it wants to eat. I can see the many threads by which these uh, things are woven into us and uh, our society now in the 21st century is one of the most programmed societies in a long time. I mean, we've seen what this can do. We've seen in World War II, we've seen the Nazi party kill anyone it wanted to. We've seen the bankers from the U.S. fund them. We've seen the U.S. take all the scientists from the Nazi party after the war and bring them here to continue doing the programs that later resulted in technology like the one that I and many 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 others are being tortured to death with and with that comment I get a large headache um, Um, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I spent so much time doing very little because, <laughs> because I'm broken, because I'm traumatized and I'm hurt and nobody seems to want to help in any real way. Uh, so, thank God for the blessings that I have. Thank God for the blessings and the angels in my life. Thank you, God, that I have a room and a, a screen and a computer and an internet connection and a bed. And I can see and talk and still go to the bathroom on my own and walk and feed myself. I still have a, two teeth by which which left to chew food and um, for the moment I'm grateful thank you um, it's difficult at times for me uh, when I'm in the midst of this horrible torturous I mean it could be really bad if you feel like you're being electrocuted it feels like you're being tormented by you know the exorcist Really, it, it can be that bad. And uh, now I forgot what I was saying. Anyway, uh, I I think about the other people in the world and how much suffering there is, uh, and and the fact that it's mostly been caused by 
evil people. They must be evil. How can you cause so much suffering and not be evil? You can't just be ignorant of it for that long on such a global scale. I, I don't believe that anymore, you know? Uh, this is purposely done. Um, if you read the statistics about how many people die every every minute from different things, how many people die from preventable disease, how many people die from preventable starvation, um, it's insane. You know the fact that we live in a system that that forces us to pay for energy that should be free, that doesn't recycle everything that that. You know, I don't even want to get into it, man. We need a makeover of our world, and I don't mean the makeover that the criminals that are in charge now seem to want to make. Uh, what we need to do is somehow take the criminals that are in charge, the ones that are really doing the earth and the people harm, and find a way to neutralize their influence to isolate their detriment uh, to remove the power that they have over us and uh, you know whether they're ever punished or not for their misdeeds is somebody else's problem <coughs> at this point I think that uh, a world not based on sickness, but a world based on help, a world based on love, a world based on fellowship, harmony, family, community, non-violence, positive experience, education, spirituality, uh, oneness with nature, you know, harmony with nature and, and planet and people and uh, we need a lot of changes and we, we could do that, we really could as a people, you know, if we all sat down and, and said this is what we want for ourselves and we were allowed to do it, we would get there, but trust me, there's there's more of us that, that, you know, the people want a good life, people want opportunity, people want comfort, people want health, they want love, they want community, they want useful work and education and positive experience, you know, almost everybody that, that should want this and if they don't, they need to be helped, they need to be corrected somehow. That seems to be the problem, is that the people who want the right stuff are the ones that aren't getting anything, and the people who want the wrong stuff are the ones that have taken over, because they're the ones that are ruthless enough, they're the ones that are uncaring, sociopathic enough to, to you know, slice anybody's throat to get where they want, to get what they want. And naturally, that kind of thing, that kind of behavior, the people who are the best at being the worst are going to gravitate to the top. So we're going to have a brutal society of a dog-eat-dog, -dog, you know, kill anyone who's less than you, who threatens you, society. And that's entirely the opposite of what we want. Why are these people so afraid? What is this reptilian brain thing happening that they're so afraid of? You know, uh, e even lizards in nature don't don't do this kind of behavior. Um, they shouldn't be afraid because if they had a society like like the one that that most people seem to want a society that that allows for individualism that allows for freedom but that has 
many positive aspects, you know, that doesn't doesn't based on money, on on how much work can you do before you die. A society that's not based on that. A society where you, the human being, is not the slave that makes the society go, that you, the human being, is an integral part of this society, that you 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 know, put forth positive effort and you get back positive things. You know? Um, there's enough land for everyone. There's enough resources for everyone. There could be enough food for everyone. There could be homes for everyone. Energy for everyone. Clothing for everyone. Health care for everyone. Uh, you know, population growth needs to be kept in check reasonably. And there's ways to do that that aren't depopulation. You know? Unless there's some catastrophic thing coming that they're not telling us about, um, and that's a whole other issue. Uh, I believe the public has the right to be informed about everything. You know, I, 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 I don't like this New World Order because it doesn't seem to want me around. And I don't see, you know, listen, I, I, I'm brutally realistic with myself. And I don't go into the, the deep negative aspects of my psyche um, and past behaviors and stuff on YouTube. But it's not like I don't see this stuff and I don't think about it and I don't talk about it with my creator and, you know I don't regret the things that I've done that I'm not proud of I do and if the situation was different if I hadn't been traumatized if I hadn't been put through this crazy MK Ultra programming if my life hadn't been destroyed repeatedly uh, if I hadn't been targeted for, you know, insanity and whatever, then perhaps my behaviors would have been entirely different. I would have lived a different life than I did, you know. And um, there's, there's, I don't think there's anyone who can remain the same person they were throughout this treatment. It's just not possible. I mean, uh, the, the the insane doses uh, of LSD and other hallucinogenic and hypnotic and other kind of drugs that they gave us every day, you know, it's it's mind-boggling. I I don't know whether I should be in the Guinness Book of World Records for uh, hallucinogenic dosing because uh, I have been dosed. <laughs> so thoroughly, so highly, so heavily, regularly by these people, and, uh, you know, I've regressed to being three years old, and, and you know, I, I, I've been through it mentally, <laughs> emotionally, physically, um, so it's not like my life is an unexamined. In fact, unfortunately, because of the nature of this thing, this neural brain mapping and this feeding the artificial intelligence singularity, everybody's brain information, and uh, you know, it turns out that, that everything, every aspect of my being is, is open for, uh, for, for examination. You know, every thought I have is is examined. Everything I every, every time I sit down on the toilet to use the bathroom, I'm monitored. People talk to me in my head, and you know, uh, I, there's not a moment that goes by where the output of my experience is not being recorded, monitored, uh, evaluated, and commented upon. So. Um, you know, the life unexamined is not worth living. Well, sometimes the life over-examined by others 
is uh, no, it's always worth living. It's just uh, <sighs> you know what? What can you say? Please, I've said that a billion times. Um, and pray to God, beg and plead, cry and whine, yell and scream, cajole and bitch, uh, call names, and, and try to logically explain to them why and why not, and show them that being evil is going to have consequences and all this other stuff, but it just doesn't seem to have any effect so far. I've only met one person who has claimed that their targeting has stopped, and God bless him. I hope that he's right, and I hope that it's true. Um, maybe he found some way to... <laughs> no, I think they just decided to leave him alone for a while, for whatever reason. Um, and that's a miracle. I just hope and pray they decide to can this whole program and turn this stuff off and leave us all alone, because we are suffering. We are dying and you know it's scary enough that this kind of thing can happen in midtown Manhattan in broad daylight in front of everybody and nobody knows a thing you know that uh, so many people of so many different professions social status financial status religious background, sexual orientation, ideology, etc., 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 can be targeted like this, tortured, given more gallons, deteriorate, sickness, die, uh, you know, amidst complaints of this is what's happening to the authorities who don't listen, then nobody seems to notice, and nobody seems to believe it, and nobody seems to do anything about it. Um, you know, is that not enough to, like, tell the world that uh, something is really, really wrong here, you know, like, this Nazi thing has already started, the, hol the Holocaust has been going on for a long time now, and uh, they've been killing us off one by one, one after another, we just didn't notice, we thought it was uh, some disease we didn't understand yet, or, uh, you know, Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I, I, I you know, I, I just keep hoping that somehow this will make me feel better. That somehow, <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, very difficult, as I'm sure all of you know, to accept being powerless. It's very difficult to accept that fellow human beings could do this to other human beings. It's difficult to accept that you know you're being tormented and tortured to death by somebody who you will never see who won't give their name, who is afraid to tell the truth about what they do because they know it. <laughs> you know, it's... It's insane. It's insane. It's it's just insane. It's... It's insane. And, um... Uh, to everybody else out there who's suffering... I'm sorry. I wish I could make it better. I wish we could make it better. I wish somebody would make it better. I wish it would end. I wish we would find a way to come together to make it uh, the world we could live in rather than this nightmare that we're, we're living in. <sighs> Thanks for spending time with me. Thanks for listening.
may god have mercy on our souls.